I do the laser collimation of the optics for my 8 inch reflector. This is a Hotec self centering laser collimator. And so you just put it in there. And then there's like this, this top panel with the um, nice grip it has. You want to hold that and then the second ring sort of rotates. But before you do that, you want to make sure that this, this target here is sort of looking to the back of the telescope. And so you'll just sort of uh, turn the ring until you tighten it pretty good. I'll show you uh, what it's like once I finish this because I need both hands. All right, folks, so here we are. Um, I've uh, tightened down the laser collimator in the draw tube, and you can see a red dot, a laser dot in the middle. There's a little donut in the center of the mirror, which you can't really see very well right now, but I'm going to use these three knobs to try to bring that a bit uh, closer to the center. And you just got to sort of walk it over, and I uh, loosen one, tighten the others, So, sort of walking it over. I'm going to try this and I'll get back to you. In the center of that donut, and I've uh, tightened down these three screws gently. And then the second part to collimating is um, uh, there's this target I showed you earlier. Now, see how it's spread out into a crosshair, and then there's the black crosshairs painted on the target. What you want to do is move these three thumb bolts, thumb screws, until you move that target into the into place. So I'll just sort of move one, one, one way and see how the target moves. And that's getting better. And it never moves directly straight up and down. This one does. The other two move at an angle. And that right there is it i got it dialed in and that's now it's a collimated newtonian reflector and uh, i'm going to set my laptop on this table here put my camera back in the draw tube and take out this really cool hotec self-centering laser collimator thanks for watching here's how we get really good polar alignment using sharp cat pro we go up to tools polar align and you have this uh, polar alignment info box that pops up. It suggests uh, a few things down here. And there's a little button here. You just hit next. Okay. Now it says could not solve. All right. So it's putting in these stars into little yellow boxes. And I have been taking one and a half second exposures. And it says, press the next button before rotating the right ascension axis. So I hit next. Now it says, now rotate the RA axis to about 90 degrees. So I'm going to do that real quick. So you come over here, unlock the RA clutch, and move it just way down here to about 90 degrees from where it was and then lock it. You want to lock that in place so it doesn't fall. All right, now it says, um, so it's trying to solve now. All right, it's solved. So you'll get a um, polar line error report. It says uh, I'm about one degree off. So that's, it calls that poor and I would agree. So um, it says pressed the next button before adjusting the alt as. So you're gonna come over here and press next. Now it's solved. And you're gonna see down here it says left, that's 22 minutes and 48 seconds, and then up 53 minutes and 35 seconds. And as it goes through and, and solves each time, and by the way, I'm using three and a half second exposures. So every time I move the scoop, I have to wait for it to take an image and solve. So it'll update this box. It'll turn like yellow when it's mediocre and then green when it's excellent. So I need my hands to do that. So hang on. All right, look at this. I'm at excellent. I'm seven, eight arc seconds from Polaris. That is, well, as it says, excellent. 
says I am um, I need to go up three arc seconds now ten and it says left three four so it keeps updating because it's taking three and a half second exposures and doing a plate solve on the sky and calculating what direction the mount head needs to be physically moved so that it's as close to alignment with the polar axis as possible celestial pole and so this is you don't want to get too greedy if anything below like really an arc minute is pretty good um, but with sharp cat pro you can get sub arc minute even just uh, a few arc seconds and so you're going to get really good uh, tracking tonight if you do this i really love it i i have i have this zwo asi camera the 120 mcs it's a color camera and the s means as usb 3.0 and uh, I've, I already had it on hand and, and, and I, just, I paid like, what, like 30 bucks for SharpCat Pro. Pole Masters are 300 bucks and they're um, harder to use and it takes a little bit longer. Sort of a pain in the neck. I like it, there you go. Seven arc seconds, six. See you later. Uh, yeah, let's just do a three second. I think it's blown out. You can see the stars, but it's certainly blown out a bit, quite a bit. There we go. Those look pretty good. Um, I'm going to plate solve this. This is pretty cool. Watch. You could just go to scope position and then hit solve. Um, it says success. It only took uh, 13 seconds to solve, and so you want to hit sync. And you can even click show. And come over here to Stellarium, and it shows you this red box is now. Th this is showing you the exact frame uh, of the image that we just took. This is the center right here is where my telescope is pointing. And you just want to do uh, some stellar alignments. So let's go to Capella, and you hit Control One. You can hear my telescope um, moving. Sorry about the cars in the background, guys. We got uh, that road right here. So it's going to try to go to Capella, and then I'm going to take another exposure. And so it failed to go to Capella. So Capella is really bright. These are dimmer stars. So what we could do is solve this. There we go. It's not so bad. Now we can hit sync, show, and come back here, go to Capella. So it's moving a little bit. So there's the Orion reflector. And we're going to take another exposure. There you go. And there it is, dead center. That's Capella. That's a bright star. So now I have a Batnov mask. I'm going to just put this on the front of the tube real quick. Hang on. All right, so let's take another picture, only I've placed a Batnov mask in front of it, so it's going to turn that star into diffraction spikes and one central. So that looks pretty good. See, I have that focus pretty well dialed in. I could tweak it a little bit. Um, yeah, let's do that real quick, but I'll do that afterwards. This is a good demonstration of the Batonov mask. It shows you, uh, you have the, this big X and then you have one central line. And if that perfectly goes through the center and, and cuts it in half, you're focused. All right. Thanks guys. All right. Check it out everyone. I'm inside now. It's nice and warm in here and comfy because thanks. Thanks all to Team Viewer, that blue and white icon. And right out there, you see that black square? That's the curtain. There's my whole rig. I can keep an eye on it. It's right there by the sidewalk and the street. And make sure uh, we don't get someone passing by. It's a little too curious, you know? But this is good. We're on frame two of 24. You see that? And uh, I can keep an eye on everything. The guiding still looks pretty good. 0.22 um, RMS. That is good. And it's dithering. It has a little log here showing what it's done recently. 
Uh, there's actually the dither event from uh, about a couple minutes ago. And this is pretty handy. This is pretty handy dandy. Um, so I could pretty much just sit in here and surf the web and watch videos on YouTube and Netflix or whatever and might make a sandwich or order a pizza or something. Anyway, I'll see you later, folks.